Down Bears fans, another week of Bears football to question. Another episode of the Chicago Bears podcast with Lance Briggs in the building. We need some expert analysis <coughs> on this, so we had to go to Lance. I mean, Lance, it's it's getting ugly out there. Uh, unfortunately, due to travel, you aren't able to uh, see it in person, but maybe no. that's not the worst thing in the world. How you feeling, Lance? <laughs> Uh, I'm feeling a, a lot better than any Chicago Bear right now, you know, and 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 I feel a lot like the rest of the Chicago Bear fans, you yeah. know, depleted, you know, just depleted, and and all that, all that, that that hope and well wishing, you know, what I mean, it's 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 starting to drift out of my doggone body, and I don't like yeah. it. It turns quick in Chicago, don't it? I'm not going to lie to you. Like, I don't know if New York is worse than this, but man, when you don't perform in this city, it turns quick. So we got to talk about what we saw. Full game breakdown and reaction. I want to get into the play of field. Also, Getsy's play calling. And do we have some questions on Matt Eberflus's leadership after two weeks of what we've seen all that and more in today's episode of the Chicago bears podcast, hit that like button, subscribe to the page, leave a five-star review. Mm-hmm. You know what to do. You're not getting this content nowhere else. Stop playing with us, man. Mm-hmm. <laughs> are you, are you following the words as they go across the screen? Is that what that was? <laughs> that was me enacting, giving this subscribe. <laughs> oh, the oh five hit, star the, hit the subscribe button. Five, five star. star wow. I like it. Oh, all yes. right, cool. Let's jump into this, man. Uh, I, I want to get first off podcast brought to you by the hard rock casino in Northern Indiana. First quarter. Yes. What did you see Sunday that was different from week one? And I want to start this on the positive that maybe makes you feel like things may be going in the right direction. What was your reaction on Sunday versus the Sunday before? Effort was better. Effort was better defensively. Um, uh, We had opportunities a few opportunities at the quarterback, you know, um, that's more than we probably could have said last week. Um, and you know what? We, we did make some, some, um, um, some plays down the yeah. field, you know, Justin Fields, he connected with uh, DJ Moore, uh, you know, DJ Moore, I think we had over hundred yards, uh, receiving, yep. uh, you know I mean? He, Cole Komet got involved in the, in, uh, in the offense, you know, there were, you know, that we, there were some big runs. We had some big runs, some, some eye formation. I liked it. So a little, little bit of the eye. Yeah, a little stuff. bit of the eye. A little eye formation. It was effective. You know, um, so there were there were some things um, that, that you can take. Oh, listen, special teams. Let's talk about special teams. You want to talk about, hey, we had a block uh, block field goal. We had a long field, by, field goal by Cairo Santos. Oh, yeah. Our coverage teams, our coverage teams were down there and, and they were shutting them down. So, you know, if you want to talk about a positive, you know, special teams in, from the parade and A. Now, unfortunately, Professor, we got to uh, we got to break down the rest of the game. <laughs> What's your real takeaway with this team that we saw in week two here? What what are you seeing right now that is just the complete disconnect um, that leads us to, I, I think, a game that was winnable <coughs> that on the field yes. you saw was still very, very winnable, even with how bad the Bears played on both sides of the ball. What did you see on Sunday that that stood out to you most that leads us to an 0 and 2 start to our season right now? Well, we're still getting out coached. We're still getting out coached because um I I hear from Shaquille Barrett after the game about uh we knew that what they were running. That was the yeah. formation, you know, and it's I that's something that I should be hearing from our Chicago Bears. Yeah. You know, there were there were too many uh uh formation tendencies that I saw out there. You know, there were a lot of tight stacks with two by two. You have receivers that are lined up kind of just like this right here in the line yeah. of scrimmage, you know, and we sit back. We allow those guys free release instead of instead of uh, going up and pressing them. We press those guys. It completely destroys the routes. I think we a little bit too much for my taste against uh, a tendency heavy um, um, formation uh, team. You know, I, I thought I saw a lot of things out of specific formations. And when you get those formations, there there should be guys up pressing guys in their face instead of letting Mike Evans run free and, then, and having to can six foot three, six foot four receiver down the field with a corner that's five foot eleven. Now, <laughs> even even with all that, right? The five foot eleven corner in Elijah Hicks. Uh, w- would you teach that tackling technique that we saw there? I believe it was. Uh, Head down, shoulders down, 
looking fully at the grass while trying to bring down 6'3 Mike Evans, who's an absolute monster on the outside. Oh, no, but you know, that's the other thing, you know, just, you know, uh, the big play, we have to reduce the amount of big plays. Yeah. You know, Mike Evans catches that, okay, get him down. You are inches from the sideline. I don't know how an outside spin move right on the, on side the sideline line and still was in bounds. <laughs> I was so I was mad. mad. <laughs> all, all he had to do all was lean this way, tip his body, and he goes out of bounds. That's all you had to do. Yeah. I was I was so mad watching that one. I think that and I think here's the tough part, right? And, and when you look at, of course, the outcome defensively at the end of the day, the one thing that I can say as bad as it was is they only gave up 20 points. Your defense gives up 20 points. You should go out there and win. Of course, the, the extra seven comes from the Justin Fields pick six at the end of the game that basically seals the deal for you. But 20 points is too much. 20, 20, points, points, is 20, much. Points, is, 20 points is too much. It's in today's time. league. In, in, in any league. Okay. If, if we're playing football a thousand years from now, yeah. it's still too many points. Are you kidding me, Pat? Come on now. Come on. I just feel like, right, with, with how much it's predicated towards the offense, with how much the, the defense, basically, and, and with the mm -mm. how the refs call mm -mm. it. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. See, and with that type of mentality right there, that's, that's called, why we that's, lose it. That's called, yeah, yeah. That's, that's why that's we lose it. That's, that's, not called, that's not called defense. That's called, hey, uh, uh, let them score here and there. If we just let them score here and there, we'll be okay. No, yeah. that is not the way you got to play defense. You play defense lights out. You don't give up anything. You make them earn everything. And you right. make them earn everything by being on top of everything that they had. Okay? Now, mistakes are going to happen, but you shoot for the stars. You don't shoot for the doggone uh, – uh, you don't shoot just shoot for the little clouds. You don't just shoot yeah. for the top of the building. You know? So, you know what I mean? And, and that's, that's part of the way that, that I saw the Bears play. Again, there were there were a tendency heavy team. I see four. They had four receivers with the running back over to the defensive. It would be the defensive left, but the offensive right. Okay, right. we don't shift off. I don't see anybody come looking at the formation right now. I'm like, listen, they have the numbers right now. They have the numbers big time. They have two more blockers than we have for defenders, and that's just, that. That to me is. It's obviously it might be it's, it's a it's a coach's thing. It's a player's thing. It's a combination yeah. of the two. But we should be shifted over. I don't know why we have guys that aren't shifted over to cover down on this play. And of course, uh, uh, Baker turns. He throws the ball to the uh, to the running back. And is there's a big hole over there. Yes, because we're not covering down. Yeah, it's it's I just think that right in a modern offense, we're not having this conversation today. And it doesn't feel like the Bears are running a very modern offense. And that's why, right, 20 points is too much. Um, should teams be keeping guys under 20 points a game? Probably. I like the mentality. I don't think it's very realistic when you look at the best defenses in the NFL today. They still usually allow more than 20 points because of how predicated this game <coughs> is on the offensive side of the ball. I just feel like the Bears don't have that offense and and we're still living in the same things that we've lived in. Heck, that you've played in, right? Where it's like, hey, guys, hey guys if uh, if this defense allows more than two touchdowns, we're in trouble today. You know, I, and, and I think that that's what I come out of this game with the feeling of we're not getting this offense that we were supposed to be promised. If we were getting the offense that we were promised, an offense that I feel like we're seeing in flashes – Right, we see Justin Fields go down the field six for six, ninety three yards, lacing the ball in there. You get it to Chase Claypool on a pass that my God looks like one of the most elite passes we've seen of Justin Fields' career, going through multiple DBs' hands and hitting Chase in the chest. Where's that the entire game? I don't think that Tampa's defense did enough to take that away from you for you to just not run it. And that's my takeaway from this game: is just the Bears look scared of their own offense. Uh, I mean, I don't, I don't know. You know, I, I don't, I don't know. I don't have all the answers, especially on, the, on that offensive side. Um, I know that um, there were plays made. There were plays that were missed. There were obviously bad reads. There were yeah. good reads. There were yeah. great throws. There were bad throws. This is, uh, you know, you know it, I think, I think um, what, what puzzles or what's most head scratching is that there were not more uh, better decisions yeah. that were made. 
you know, from the from the from the coaching staff and from the players. You know, you want to see you want to see if if a play is, is ineffective, you still want to see the right the, the the right decision or a decision that you can argue that hey, you know, I could go on. You know, a fan can say that was a dumb throw, and I can go on on yeah, here yeah, and say yeah. hey, this was the right throw. You know, it was just. You know, he had a receiver fall or it was just an errant pass. It was off a little bit to the right, a little, little bit to the left, whatever it is. It was the right decision. So um, it's there uh, again. There's there. There are things that that happened that were positive. There were things that happened that were negative. We just didn't have enough of a positive positivity on the offensive side. Now, I, I do want to try and give because here's the thing. It's still early in the season. We're two games in. Realistically, we saw our team move in the right direction, just not a big enough step, I feel. Right? Like, right. I, I thought, and and I w- we'll get more into Floos as a leader, but I thought defensively, the mindset of Floos was different in this game than what we saw from Allen Williams. He was trying to create pressure on Baker. Did bl- Now, I didn't blitz a ton more, right? Only, I believe Allen Williams blitzed on 17%. Floos blitzed on 22%, I believe it came out to, right? It's not a crazy amount more, but you're trying to create pressure around Baker. The Bears created pressure around Baker on half of those. How do you bring those pressures home? Yannick had two clean looks at Baker that he missed, and that's very uncharacteristic of him. Are we seeing the environment affect who these players really are? Because Tremaine Edmonds doesn't look like the same guy. Yannick doesn't look like the same guy. That that should have been a two-sack day for Yannick. And mm-hmm. realistically, we're not seeing what we saw from these guys on their previous teams. Well, here's, you know, it, 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 it's you when you play these games, Okay, um, Shaquille Barrett says we knew exactly what they were going to run when we saw that formation. Yeah, they were the Bucks are a very tendency heavy formation team. Okay, and just watching what they're doing, I can call out right now what they're what, what they're going to run. Okay, and if that's the case, and this is what this is the problem that I have with with defenses giving up 20 points, right? right? If you do your doggone homework and you look at the doggone tendencies, you know what they're going to run. <laughs> so if you sit back and allow them to yeah. release freely, yes, they're going to pick you apart, yeah. right? But if you get up, let them get in those tight stacks with those receivers near the box and you get up there and you press those guys hard, you press them hard, all right? Now you give the defensive line an extra half a second to get to the quarterback and you disrupt the routes, all right, you disrupt the timing of the offense, and it's so important to understand what you're doing. We sit back way too much uh, yeah. in our coverages and allow free releases from all our receivers. And when you do that, man, you just allow them to get right into the space that they're looking for. You know, I didn't see good jumps on uh, from our linebackers moving over them. Um, uh, even even uh, Sanborn, I didn't see him fit correctly. He was doing independent movement, which I like. But you get two pullers going to your side, man. You've got to it, 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 your key, and he's still peeking into the backfield. You've got to come downhill right now and yeah. set an edge, head, head, hammer everything inside. Yeah. So, so there's to me, you know, there's there's a lot of reasons why twenty points are scored on a defense. All right, but if you're sound and you're sharp, that twenty drops down to fourteen, thirteen, and twelve. Yeah. You know, and now, now that 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 twelve becomes eighteen because the offense gave up a touchdown. The problem too is right. Like this isn't something that is new. You thought this changed with new players, uh, but this is right in, in a twelve game span. The Chicago Bears are the only team. Now, granted, last season very different defense than what you got this year. In a twelve game span, the Chicago Bears are the only team ever to allow twenty five points or more moving forward or, or through that entire stretch, Jeff. Uh, um, gave us that stat last night on the post post game show, and you know it, it is mind boggling when you see what seems to be a team that finally gets the talent still allow Baker Mayfield to have 317 yards, 26 for 34. I'm not even that mad about the yards. What I'm mad about is the completion percentage. Baker Mayfield looked elite, and yep. and. And like, it's like you said, now I will ask you this, right? From a defensive perspective, Mm -hmm. are, are they playing back more because you lose Jaquan Brisker early? You lose Eddie Jackson. No, you are playing back to the DB room. Pat, they were playing back last week. They were playing back last week. They were playing back this week. It's, it's like, um, it's for us, you know, it reminds me of 2004 
uh, uh, Bears defense, you know, and it's it's a new coach, new system, and we're learning how to play it the right way, you know. And then after 2004, we go to 2005, and we we start change. We we play more aggressively, right. you know. Oh, hey, we get into this bunch stack. Hey, we gotta we gotta press the point. All right, we get into these bunch stacks. You know, hey, the Eagles are coming in with these tight stacks. Let's go up there, press the point. Let's press the point here. Hey, these are the routes that they're going to run out of these formations. Let's get a jump on it. All right, you recognize those routes. Let's get reroutes. Let's get a jump on these routes. Let's help. Let's help out. Let's let's play the play. Let's play the play that they're running against us. So, um, yeah. Mm. So what I say, you you we sat back. You know, I I just don't think that we're playing aggressively enough. Uh-oh. Could this season be looked at very similar to your 2004 season? The only reason I ask that, yes, Flus has been there a year, Mm -hmm. but most of this defense hasn't been there a year. Yeah, and and you want to talk about pieces too. We're we're still missing. uh, We're still missing (laughs) elite the the elite interior. There's no three. There's no three technique. Rush, right? We're still missing that. We chose not to get there. We chose to go offensive line. You know, and 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 that's that that was going to be a catch. I talked about this in the off season. I said, you know, you go either way. Either way, you know, I, I would assume you go offense because that's where where uh, you got to protect your quarterback. Yeah. But we have two, two first-round picks next year. So when we get into this season and we don't have the elite pass rush that we were hoping, you know, just know that we went offense instead of defense. Yeah, and, and I think the thing is, right, you can live with that if the Bears are putting up 28, 30 a game, but you're putting up 17, and uh, like it, it's not even a competitive game at this point. I mean, I guess at the end, right, it felt a little more competitive. That second half felt a little more competitive, but there's, there's, there's a lot that needs to be fixed. I get it, right? These are early games, and, and a lot of teams look bad. Listen, if we went just off of the eye test, the Bengals are going to be a horrible football team. Uh, the Jaguars are going to be a horrible football team. Uh, the Jaguar, I, the best part, the Meller said this yesterday, and I went back and rewatched the game, and I laughed so hard. He said it looked like the Jaguars got to the red zone and they were playing in the CFL because they mm. were throwing to a twenty yard off uh, uh, end zone because all the plays were like five oh, yards past the back of the end zone. It's like, what the heck are you guys doing down here? <laughs> I, you know what, Pat? Pat, you know, listen, we we go back and forth on this show. Yeah. Um, but what you just said right there, I couldn't agree more with <laughs> you, my friend. Okay, you 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 pin the, you pin the tail on the donkey with that one. Okay, yeah. let me tell you, hey, you know that, hey. that the, the the you know if you when we chose to go offense, yeah, that is absolutely that means we 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 need our offense to score more than twenty points. Yeah, we need uh, to and put that's more than and twenty points on the board. That's what you got to come away with. Like you can't. And, and you need to utilize, I think here's the part that irritates Bears fans most coming out of two weeks now, right? You went out and got DJ Moore. DJ Moore gets two targets in the first, one target in the second. That goes for a yard. It's a screen pass that goes backwards. No targets in the third. No, he got three targets in the third. He went for over 100. And you get, uh, and you get no targets in the fourth. But on your last drive, Going down the field to win the game, you threw two screen passes to Khalil Herbert, not one pass to DJ Moore. Those are the things that I look at and I say, why did you go get him? Why did you go out and try to acquire this piece if he can't be your number one? And I, you know what? From a defensive aspect, I want to ask you this as well because there, there's been a lot on, well, you know, when he's double teamed, Justin's not going to force that ball in there. How often would you guys double team guys like a Megatron or a Randy Moss? And we didn't double. Of- we didn't double. Y'all didn't double at all. We didn't double. We didn't double. Okay. <clears throat> we didn't double. We knew what routes they were going to run. So yeah. you, you take listen. You play against a, a Detroit Lions team that that throw the ball eighty nine percent of the time. Yeah. Um, all you need to know is where he lines up. Uh, it, it's it's not he's not running eight different routes. No, he's right. running. In, in some positions where he's at, he runs. He runs maybe one route. In the other positions, when he lines up in the slot, he runs one route. When he lines yeah. up in the on the backside of of trips, he's running possibly two routes: a go route and a stop. Okay. Right. He's, so all you need to know is what routes he's, he's Megatron. He's not. He's, he's not a shifty guy. Yeah. He's a you know he's a downhill threat. He's a downfield threat. So wherever he lines up, we know we know what routes to look for. So right. as an inside backer, you know if I'm cheating. 
if I'm if I'm the free player and I'm cheating, or if I'm a, in the middle hook player and I'm cheating, I know which routes to to cheat toward. I know when to cheat flat. I know when to cheat deep. I know what's how to play it. You know, and these are the things that you have to know uh, going into. Let's say you play Tampa Bay. Yeah. You know, Tampa Bay they get no spread two by two. They run a lot of option route. So the problem with them running an option route because they because Baker's getting the ball. He's turning. He's throwing right now, and our quarter our our linebackers aren't showing up as the ball arrives. Yeah. Um, you have your corners that are playing off instead of press. So you have to, as the linebacker, you have to assume that it's an inside release. If it's an outside release, you can overplay too. Inside release, you have to assume that that there's a dig or a curl coming behind. So it makes you play, you have to play it deep to short. Okay. But the what what the what the the scouting report should say is this is a three-step drop. He's turning, he's throwing. We should be arriving, either picking or knocking the ball out as a linebacker every time. And with all that information, y'all hear this man knows what he's talking about, how smart he is. How many times would teams still say, I know that the Bears defense knows that one of the most dominant defenses in the world, I still got to get this ball to Megatron. Oh, yeah, they're going to do it. got to get this ball to Randy Moss. <laughs> Absolutely, but you know what? Listen, we're going we're gonna to put our money on Charles Tillman. We're going to put our money on Peanut Tillman every time. I'm with Every you. I'm with time. you. But it's the mindset of the mindset. that's my number one. I have to get the ball to my number one. The Chicago Bears don't have that mindset. Listen, I, I, I just pulled this up, right? And and very up and down. My favorite back and forth is Peanut versus Megatron because of what you just said, right? The one-on-one -on -one aspect of it. Sometimes Peanut won it. Sometimes Megatron won it. Let me just list this for y'all, though. 17 targets, 8 receptions, 94 yards. 12 targets, 8 receptions, 133. 10 targets, 4 receptions, 45 11 targets, three receptions, 34, 19. Tar They're throwing him the ball no matter what. And the Chicago Bears go down on the last drive and they say, you know who the answer is? Khalil Herbert. What? I, I can't. I That <laughs> is mind boggling to me. You went out and got a legitimate number one receiver and you said you're going to get the ball less than 10, thrown your way less than 10 times. That's unacceptable. Well, I mean, sometimes you got to psych somebody's mind, you know, psych your mind, your booty shine. <laughs> whoa, whoa, wait a minute. Hold on now. <laughs> what? <laughs> what? 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 <laughs> no, no, Eric. That's the, that's the old, the that's no, no, I don't want to. I had cancel pad on the screen two listen, weeks in a row. <laughs> I, listen, uh, you know what? I haven't, listen, I haven't said that since I was in elementary school. I haven't said hey. that since I was in elementary school. Hey, you need to leave that there. Don't, don't bring that <laughs> one back. It's, don't bring that one back, baby. <laughs> Lee that one right back in elementary. Let's keep this show moving along, man. We're having a good time. Second quarter. Even though this has uh, been ugly, y'all can already see I'm fuming a little bit here by some of the play callers. But I do want to jump into some specific parts of it. The play calling we'll get to. Let's jump into in the second quarter into the play we saw from Justin Fields. Second quarter brought to you by Hard Rock Casino, Northern Indiana. You can see John Mulaney and Pete Davidson at Hard Rock Live Friday, October 6th. Tickets on sale now at Ticketmaster.com. You a fan of either Mulaney or Davidson? You a, you a, com a comedy fan? I'm a comedy fan. Yeah, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a fan. I'm definitely a fan of uh, Pete Davidson. You know, he's, he's, he got I mean, that drive. On, very dry, but I mean, even his his his... <laughs> His life, his life is funny too. His life is comedy too. You know what I mean? Pete it's Davis, you know, it's entertaining. His life is entertaining. Let's put it. Yeah, like that. he'll just he'll just be like, and then I dated Ariana Grande, and now I don't. <laughs> and that's the joke. He just moved past it. You'd be like, wait, what? Huh. <laughs> let's, <laughs> insert let's, laugh. Insert laugh. Aha. Uh, let's jump into this this play that we saw of Justin Fields. Uh, what did the Buccaneers do that? turn Justin Fields into I guess what I would call a quarterback that looked lost out there. Uh, I think that this was by far with everything that has been added because before this game I could always say scheme is an issue here. There's no players here. You're not you have no protection on this young man. Yesterday I think that things were good enough that for an average quarterback you should be able to go out there and make plays. And we didn't see that from Justin enough. There what were did the Buccaneers do that that took away Justin Fields just being the average guy. There were there were there were three or four dropbacks where 
I'm wondering when you're going to decide to throw the ball, you know, or I'm, take I, off <laughs> or, or take or, off <laughs> or take off because <clears throat> the protection was there. Yeah. The protection was there. You know, I understand, um, um, you know, coverage sacks. I understand coverage sacks, stuff like that. But with the quarterback of the caliber of Justin Fields, you know, coverage sack should not matter. If you're getting protection and coverage sack, you find your hole and go uh, and go get a first down. You know, yeah. Baker Baker Mayfield, he, he knew to do that. He knew to do that. And he's not half the runner that, that Justin Fields is. But he sat back in that in the in the pocket. And I'm like, man, what are you doing? Yeah. You know, you couldn't. We couldn't get this last week. We couldn't get this last week, and now it's there. If it's a covered sack, fine. Run, run, run. You're the kind of guy that takes a a a, a quarterback run five yards. You take it 60, 70 yards for a doggone score. You know you're imposing as a runner. So <clears throat> I I was I was most disappointed in in the good protection and the poor decision to either run or get the ball out of your hand. And it's not that it was great protection every time, but it was enough for you to make some of the plays where the set, like I saw, I saw Dan Orlovsky. He basically said, right, two of two of the uh, uh, six sacks aren't on Justin Fields. I completely disagree. I think that there's one sack yesterday that the offensive line gave up. Mm -hmm. And it's Darnell Wright just being a rookie, completely missing his assignment and getting crushed mm -hmm. on the outside. And mm -hmm. Justin Fields takes a big shot. That's yeah. the one sack that I looked at yesterday, and I was like, that's 100% on the offensive that's line. That's a line. I, I got to go back and, and look through everything. But outside of that, it just felt like, and, and hear me on this. Yes, there may be receivers downfield, like you said, a cover sack, right? They're not open. They're, the, the, you can't throw that ball in there. But the Justin Fields of last year would have been gone. And it feels like he's trying to prove to the world, I'm a passer, not a runner. I'm going to stand in here and pass the football and he's starting to look like what we saw from Mitch Trubisky trying to run Matt Nagy's system. You said it. You said when he was Mitch trying to Trubisky. just just force himself, or when they were trying to force him to run Matt Nagy's system. He's just got to stand there in the pocket. He's got to wait for something to open up because it's going to come. The system says that it's going to be there. You know what? The defense coming. is running the system too. Something's coming. But it's not a it's not a receiver. It's yeah, a, it's a it's a pass rusher coming to take your head off. And and I that's that's where right week two two weeks into this, the feeling I get is Justin's trying to prove to the world I'm what you saw in Ohio State. You want to know what we saw yesterday, Lance? <laughs> I saw a garbage bowl yesterday uh, from the New York Giants and the Arizona Cardinals. Yes. Yes. You want to know what the two quarterbacks in that game did? Talk to me. Daniel Talk Jones me, was 26 for 37 for 321 yards, two touchdowns and a pick. Of course he was. Joshua Dobbs was 21 for 31, 228 yards and a touchdown. You want to know what uh, both of these guys have in common? They're not good. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. And Justin Fields was worse than that yesterday. 16 for 29, 211, one pick, two interceptions. Are you I'm surprised? concerned about his play. Are you, are you surprised being in Chicago as long as you've been? You know, it, it, all you, which is all your life. Oh, my are life. Are you surprised that, that, that the expectation, the hope that we are going to have success is – I'm not saying it's washed down the drain. It's only week two. You know? It's only week. Two. It's, it's only week. It's only week two. There's plenty to do. There's plenty of. There's plenty of football left, and I'm still hoping that it's gonna. They're gonna. They're gonna get this thing. The ship right. Um, but are you surprised? I'm surprised from the aspect of the Bears. How many Bears times can you be surprised? How many times can you be surprised? Oh no! Oh no! Listen! Life? Listen! Listen! Fair. Listen! Before this, I was never surprised. The only thing that's surprising me is that, and you can attest to this, right? The Bears have never done it this way. The Bears have never said, we're going to go outside of the organization and get somebody who is the new GM and we're going to give him an assistant. And we're also going to change the president and we're going to change the eyes that are on this team that are running this team. I'm surprised because everything else about this team felt like it was the pushing the team towards a modern NFL team, mm -hmm. except the offense now. <laughs> Offenses typically take longer than defenses to 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 jail, you know. Um, 
And, and that's, that's one of my hopes, you know, um, uh, you know, especially when we get Tevin Jenkins back, my hope is Tevin Jenkins can stay healthy for five, six games, you know, and give us a, a, a full on, uh, full blown offensive line that we've been hoping for this year. You know, uh, Nate Davis is in shape, you know, we're not worried about him missing any reps because he's not 110% ready. Yeah. You know, and so we have we have uh, chemistry up there. Again, they blocked better this year, this week than they did last week. There were opportunities. I think know? that speaks to the chemistry, though, right? Darno Wright and Jatir Carter have been the two standing next to each other the entire time. Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, and, and so, you know, again, like I said, my my hope is that uh, the the ship gets righted, you know, sooner rather than later. You know, yeah. um, can't fall, keep continue to fall back behind. We need to get fifty percent. We need to be too. Um, we need to win at least two games in this uh, this this first quarter. All right, we have two more opportunities. We got to go out. We got to win these games, and we got Kansas City this week. So, woo! <laughs> Owen, Owen, not three. impossible. Is that, is that not what you're impossible. Is that what not you're saying? Is that I'm what you're saying? It's, saying not, it's not impossible. That's what I'm saying. But if you do sit down, I'll tell you right now. Defensively, if we sit back. And we oh my god! We sit back oh my the way that we have to <laughs> sit back this week and last week. <clears throat> it's not. It's not the scheme. You play aggressively. If yeah. you play aggressively, you know the, the 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 this Kansas City offense. They have the best quarterback in the league. I understand that, but it also if you watch him, his routes take time. Just like yeah. you said with Matt Nagy, his routes yeah. take time. So. A lot of times, Patrick doesn't want to just throw it right now. He'll hold it. He'll scramble. He'll scramble. Then they'll come open. Okay. Yeah. If we don't get up in those in those receivers' faces and jam them and allow our defensive linemen to go and not even, not only get the opportunity, you know, when you when opportunity is there, don't miss a doggone layup. Get him down. You know what I mean? Get him down. But we have to reduce the time that he has to sit in that pocket or roll roam around to find somebody to get to uh, to to throw it to. Is there hope because of how many pressures the Bears were able to create this week? 17 pressures this week, uh, basically pressuring them on half his dropbacks, that the pressure's coming, it just hasn't gelled yet because of all these new pieces. And realistically, because these first two weeks are the first two times these guys are really playing together. Again, I'm going to come back to what I said before. You know, they probably would have had more pressures if we um, play aggressive. If- if we play aggressively from our defensive backfield, the, yeah. a, a team like the the team a team like the the Buccaneers, um, and even before even the week before with the with the Packers, they were very heavy uh, formation tendency teams. Yeah. You know, I'm watching. I'm like, listen, uh, what I'm seeing out of these formations are opportunities for us to get up and help our pass rush right now, and us to uh, 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 um, to eliminate these the 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 timing of this or destruct uh, or or um, um, be a nuisance to the timing on this offense. Let's jump into the halftime segment here because I, I got I to gotta talk about something uh, not Bears for, for at least 10 minutes. <laughs> just, just give me 10 minutes on here. I actually want to look around the league, though, Lance. Okay. Okay. Two weeks into this. Mm-hmm. Where do you stand on players should play preseason, should play not preseason? Because I love football. I'm happy football's back. I have watched two weeks of a lot of bad football. A lot of football where it's like, wow, that's a lot of mistakes. Wow, that's a that's a that's an issue. Wow, that what that's not the team that I thought. Again, the Jags, the Bengals, the the Chiefs. Realistically, in two games, the Chiefs have not looked good. Correct. Right. It it almost gives you like maybe they won't figure it out against us. They I mean, it usually happens against us. Against but, us, <laughs> it usually happens. That's when oh hey bears are here. We we got it. But Ooh. where do you feel now, looking around the league, that the level of play is, and is this just what we're gonna have to expect to start seasons off from now on? Where I feel like your generation of football was a lot pro- more prepared to start a season. Uh, well, it's trending. It's certainly trending that way. You know, and um, we'll, we'll, we'll see. You know, it, it takes, uh, you know, and I think it's because <clears throat> because you you talk about a team like the Chiefs. You know, the Chiefs are, they're a seasoned offense. They're a very yeah. seasoned offense. It's the most you know, seasoned they, you're going to get. <laughs> you know, it's the most seasoned you're going to get, and they're, they're, they're moving slow, too. But there's a lot of, there's, there's some new players in that system, too. Um, it's, it's, it's hard to say, but what I do know is that in an aggressive, violent sport, if if you're not if you're not banging around you know from day one 
uh, getting your body prepared for what's going to what for for this seventeen game plus season, um, you're doing yourself a disservice. Yeah. You know, you, you, and then you all of a sudden throw guys in, and you say, "Hey, go out there and 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 get ready to play this aggressive and violent sport." You know, you're gonna get hit. Everybody got a plan until they get hit in the mouth. You know, you get hit, <laughs> then you get hit in the mouth. You start stumbling, you start stumbling. You know, out the gate. And now, coach is trying to tell you, "Hey, man, hey, 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 let's hey, let's get back up, let's." Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that stuff's not working, coach. It's not working, coach. Oh, it, that's so true. Everybody got a plan until you get hit in the mouth. It, it's it's weird though, right? It's almost like teams. It's almost like we're to a point where teams don't care about the first couple of games of the season and maybe that speaks to where the league is going because we know we're heading towards an 18 week season that is probably going to be in place within the next couple of years i mean what does that say Hope about not. your nfl i like I, I i really think that we're heading towards a part where the nfl regular season will become what the nba is trying to stop their season from being where listen all i need is nine games to get into the playoffs i don't really care about the first four of the season. I just want to make sure we're healthy in this stretch of the season. Yeah. Where you, you they're, they're trying to eliminate the, the, the games off. Yeah. The I mean, the, the NFL, I mean, now granted, very different sport, right? The <laughs> NBA versus very different, but the no, NBA regular season became basically, we don't care. Right. Yeah, if we yeah, get in as a six seed, I got LeBron. Correct. Correct. It, 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 you're right. It's, it, it's going to turn to that. You know I mean? You're going to have small injuries that become lingering lingering injuries that you're going to sit, Hey, I'm going to sit this guy, you know, I'm going to sit you or, or I'm going to sit for these next two weeks. You know, if, you know, maybe we get, maybe we get 50, 50, we, we split these next two games, 50, 50. But if we, if we, uh, let's say we win those games, yeah. you know, do I, do you need me this next week? What are, you know, what's the situation? What are, yeah. you know, what's going on? It's, it's going to be a, it's, it's certainly going to be an issue. I can tell you that much right now. 18 games is so much, man. It's a lot of what's football. It, what, what's it going to do to your bodies? It's, yeah. Would you, if they, when they do, I'm not even saying if they're doing it, right? When they do because of the money that's attached to it. Hope not. Would you eliminate, if you're running everything preseason at that point, because of how these first month of football is basically viewed now as that's okay. We can bounce back from that. Would you basically just say training camp, start the season, you figure it out in season with games that matter. Cause that's pretty much what the teams are doing at this point. I, no, I think you, I think you eliminate that and you, you do joint practices, mm -hmm. do joint practices. You get your scrimmaging in with those joint practices. Um, do, do uh, numerous joint practices. You, if you have, if you have a three week schedule, you have three weeks of, of joint practices with various teams. Yeah. Okay. Get your scrimmaging in there. Have sell your tickets to for people to come in and see the scrimmage. All that good stuff. Get into the game. Get into the season. <laughs> do, do joint practice in the stadium. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like like Absolutely. you know like listen. Packers Stadium sold out for for Family Day. Bears Stadium. You know people were there for Family Day. Uh, a Viking Stadium, I believe, sold out for family. Like you, do it in the stadium if you're gonna do it right. Like realistically, more. I'd rather see that because I know I'm going to see the ones versus the twos. And literally all of that matters more than a preseason game at the end of it, because I saw uh, three seconds of literally, I think our starting defensive line played three plays together in preseason. Right, right, right. <laughs> so what are we doing it for at that point? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I, you know, I think you'll get more quality reps. You'll get more quality reps. You'll get to plug certain guys in, you know, and, and it's, and, 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 you know, as from a coaching standpoint, you know, you can coach things up on the go. Like, Hey, yeah. Hey, no, no, no. Let's Hey, can you guys run that play again? Can you run that one more, one more time? I want to get you guys to see this right here because we had talked about this in the, in the, uh, in the meeting room. I want to get you guys moved over. I need you to see it and show yeah. me that you can see it. I want your first step. Show me that your eyes are right. I'm, so, I, I'm, I'm with you, man. Like I, I, like I've said, I know, I know you hope not, but but the NFL said we can make a lot more money on this 17th game. I'm, I'm pretty sure 18's coming. Uh, and I think realistically, right, the one thing that I will say about this, and I think it would just change the mindset of the fan as we jump into the third quarter here, is the the trials that your team is going through, you view differently if you basically say the first four weeks of the season, but well, this is kind of like preseason now. Like these guys are getting themselves in shape. And I think that that would affect how we look at Luke Getze's game plan, his play calling, Justin Fields' play, because Luke Getze's play calling as a whole. 
I mean, listen, EO, we we got the clip, right? Let's play the, the Levante David clip where he basically talks about, you know, what they saw in that last play. Yeah, big play, big play. I mean, yeah, yeah. They called a screen, you know, the same formation that everybody knew what was coming. So he read out, you know, he got the uh, That play wasn't going to be anything with Levante. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. You know, you, you see me right there, so, you know, uh, but, you know, he just made a big call. Like, you know, playmakers make plays, and, uh, you know, his number was called. And he made I watched Dan Orlovsky break this play down. He literally was like, I've never seen somebody in this situation run a play. It worked the first time, holding penalty, right? Let's clean the penalties up. I need that fixed too. The same play, the next play, unless like you just have a belief that that defense on the other side is garbage, like Shaq Barrett, Levante David, and, and Vita Vea have reps together. These guys have won a Super Bowl together. You can't do that versus this team. And I think that Luke Getze is going through very similar inconsistencies to Justin Fields where we look at some drives and we're like, wow, this guy's flying down the field. We look at others and we say, this looks grade school. I would think that an NFL play caller would know the answer on this. What are you seeing from Luke Getze right now to start this season that has you concerned most? The 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 theoretical uh, uh, term, you know, these offensive guys, these offensive uh, coordinators, um, they'll run a play like that. They'll run that screen two times in a row and they'll say, well, theoretically, it, sh it should work. You know, I've heard I hear this term. <laughs> this, this term happens a lot, man. I had a had a uh, uh, in OC, theory had a o, had an OC man. He ran a he ran a quarterback sneak like four times in a row, you know, against UCLA. And he said and we got into the to the meeting room. He said, "Well, theoretically, it should work. We have the numbers." <laughs> All right. However, come on, because football's played on the numbers, right? Right. Like right. And, and you're gonna line up in the same formation, you know, and run the same play. I'm daring you. I'm like, wow. There's this is that same formation they just ran. If I'm gonna, if they're gonna run, I'm gonna slide to my right a little yeah. bit. And as soon as I see that, oh, it's the same. I'm gone now. I'm I'm in better position now than I was to play before. Yeah. You know, I'm, I, and now you want to get the numbers. You won't be able to seal me as a block because I'm in there on the play. That just theoretically, you you, you should have thought something else. And my favorite part, right, is then we hear this from Matt Eberflus uh, today on the Cap and Jay Hood show with his, the, his interview with them. gets the play call in you're at the six yard line a was it the wrong play call looking back or b does he is he allowed to audible out of that if he looks at the front and goes this is not going to work yeah well to, to answer your question there you know that the play call was fine um you know back there we were it was you know uh, on the six yard line so we weren't standing in our own end zone there but what happens uh, on that play is they were playing uh cover two so they're playing soft cover two and we're in a three by one formation, and that plays a, a really good play versus that coverage. Um, you know, the halfback screen. They ran a little text game there, and uh, you know, Shaq did a nice job of, of coming out of that text game, the, uh, the TE game, and and made a nice play. But uh, you know, in terms of that, I thought it was a, was a good decision there. We just got to execute better. Now, uh, now, Lance, listen. I, I know the outcome changes a lot of the thought process on that. But um, th did you see what Matt Eberflew saw on that? That that <laughs> that soft cover two that that didn't uh, that, that that is the perfect play call for. <laughs> there was nothing soft about that cover two that they played. <laughs> nothing soft about that cover two that we're playing. All right, you, you, you know your know your opponent, know your personnel, know what you're gonna know what you're going into it. You know, and and for me, if I, I'm not an offensive coordinator. But I wouldn't have run that. Yeah. Right? I'll tell you right now, I wouldn't have run that. And if I'm gonna run that, I'm not gonna run it out of the formation that I always run it out of. Yeah, you it, know? it's it, it's elementary at best at times with Luke Getzey. And then, and again, right? I'm not gonna sit here and tell you that there are no times where Luke Getzey calls plays. Heck, that tight end screen up the middle that they get to commit on the touchdown drive. I was like, that's one of the best drawn up plays I've seen him call because, like, out of all the screen passes you've called. That's probably the one that they weren't expecting. <laughs> like, I, I, it's almost like Luke Getzey's using the screen pass as the main offense when, if, if I'm not mistaken here, right? Like, the screen pass is supposed to be used to catch you off surprise. 
Right. Or, you know, long, long distances, you know, the, the plays where you don't have a play for it. second yeah. and 15, you know, third and, and, and 16 and 11, you know, third and 22, you know, screen draw, screen draw, try to get you closer to either uh, 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 a, a better situation for punt or get you closer to the first down market. Yeah, it, it, I just I, I feel like the the up and down of his play calling in this game is paired so well with the up and down of Justin Fields' play calling or his uh, execution of plays. And realistically, I think at the end of the day, Luke's play calling and Justin's play speaks to the fact that it doesn't seem like they trust each other very much when they get on the field. Well, we'll see. I don't, you know, I, I don't I don't necessarily know. No, I wouldn't say that. You know, I wouldn't say that again. This is week two. Um, and they're, you know, if, if, if anything, it, this is more experimental, what they're trying to do or think they can accomplish, um, as opposed to where I hope that, uh, um, um, the, the, the season leads, you yeah. know, screens happen. They just must be his bread and butter. That's his thing, you know, <laughs> um, but, uh, we're going to have to come up with a little more bread and butters. All right. We have plenty of weapons around there. We have plenty of things that we can do, and we can exploit people with with uh, uh, Justin's ability to run. You know, <laughs> look, do I want Justin Fields' legs to win every game? No, but we can expose what our defense, what we're, our competitors can do against us if we can take advantage of that a few times a game, and then sit back and do. You know, it's even. 100%. I mean, Buffalo Buffalo is still doing it. You know, they're supposed to be reducing it. They are reducing it. But they're still utilizing that as a weapon. That is something that you have to be able to defend. What 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 irritates me is that when I see what they're doing with Justin Fields, how they're running it, and even how Justin's mindset is right now in these moments, right? The, he's standing back there, patting the ball, patting the ball, patting the ball. Mm. Back last season, right? Look, the guys weren't open because of the talent. He's taking off. All right, bet I'm out of here. He's trying to force himself to stay in there and trust his guys. But realistically, you're putting your offensive lineman in bad positions. You're now putting uh, 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 yourself in a bad position because the linemen are either going to have to hold or they're letting this guy through and he's going to hit you. And it, it feels like they're trying to – it feels like Justin, to me, is trying to, again, prove what he is as a passer. There's only three rushing yards yesterday. You got to take off on at least half of those plays that we saw, especially if yes. they're not down there. Yeah, yeah. You know, if you have time to to pat that ball, you have time to run. Yeah, All right. And, and I, I get it. Right? There's a spy on you. They're watching you. They're expecting that to come. But isn't that an advantage to the offense then? Right? If Justin kind of makes that move to start the run, now the linebacker DB that's watching him is out of position because he's got to start to come up towards Justin. You should have somebody there to drop that in, right? Am I it ain't going to – it's not it, – regardless of that, you know, I mean, him, the the size and speed of Justin, you know, if he runs – if he runs it two times, two out of those times, he's going to make big yards. One of those times, maybe somebody comes in and they make a heck of a play. Yeah. You know, but I'll take those numbers. I'll take those yeah. numbers every time. I've never been one to – it's weird to me when people are like, I just want to see a pocket passer. I don't know if they're watching the modern NFL. Like, they, they want to see Justin stand back there. They wanted to see Mitch stand back there and legitimately get his head taken off because he's proving that he's standing in the pocket, right? And to me, Justin has a skill set that nobody else has. And I feel like Luke Getzey trying to – I don't know if it's to appease Justin or coach him to be a pass or whatever it is, is taking that thing that – what, Lamar Jackson has that? Justin Fields is literally an elite runner of the football, and it's not to say you want to see that every time, but that puts defenses on their heels a little bit because guess what? I got to watch worry about this guy taking off. Not this season we don't, at least through two weeks. I think at, at some point at some point in his career, he will probably have to be a – a pocket passer, you know, yeah. you last that long, you know, as a starter, you'll have to be a pocket passer. But right now with your young body, you can move, you know, you can, you're, you're, you know what I mean? Big, strong and fast, you know, use what you have, yeah. use what you have because what you have is such an advantage for the offense and it's such a disadvantage for the defense. So just, just having that element, you know, I'm seeing, I've seen quarterbacks that can run, that's fine, but not running backs that can run, through tackles, yeah. you know, like him. So use what you have while you can, because at some 
point in your career, you know, it's it's you're not gonna move like that anymore. You're gonna have to sit in that pocket, and then when you have you have to sit in there and become a pocket passer. If that if that first read, if you don't get those that first second read, then you're looking at trying to avoid a sack. Yeah. Four quarters. Uh, let's finish it off here too, because I think this all comes down to one thing for me, um, mm. Matt Eberflus, and I am I am two weeks in now, and I'm really questioning the leadership that we have. I saw him yesterday. I'm not gonna lie, you you would know better than me, but I thought that he called a better game than Allen Williams did. Yes, whether it was marginally better or what, I thought that he called a better game than Allen Williams did. Clearly, he's a good DC. There's some there's some fundamental stuff. Yes, he did call it better than Allen did the week before, but there's still fundamentally there, there's there's some issues that I'm seeing. Um, right. We and and I and 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 teams are taking advantage of it, and I'm uh, I'm really sick of it because it's we need to be more aggressive. We need to be more aggressive on our defensive backfield. Period. But that right there, right? Where are you at with Matt as? the head coach, the leader of the unit that we have in here now, because through two weeks, his principles are the hits principles. I've seen a team that has lacked hustle. I've seen a team that has lacked intensity and we have zero takeaways. Yeah. Um, not good, not good, not good. And, uh, and again, we're, we're two weeks in, we're Owen yeah. two. And the, 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 the principle that he stands on, I'm not seeing it. You know, I'm not seeing that right now. So, um, again, got to continue. He's got to write this ship. He's got to write it quick. This is a great game for the Bears to bounce back on because there is probably zero expectation of them being yeah. the Kansas City Chiefs. Um, so it would be a great statement game for them to come out and play, use that hits principle defensively and offensively, you know, come up with a few new bread butters, you know, and, and also use uh, Justin Fields Use those legs a little bit, man. Use those legs, take advantage, and win the game. Just, just find a way to win the game. It has been 329 days since the last time the Chicago Bears won a game. We are almost at a calendar year since the last Chicago Bears win. I believe that uh, was versus the Patriots. Mm -hmm. And it, it's... Listen, oh, I'm not I'm, I'm not I'm not one of those people that there's a lot of people that are trying to flip the narrative now. Right. And I, I, that I don't like and, and that I won't allow you to at least on this show to put on the Bears. Right. The losses last season aren't this season's losses. People are trying to say, look, you know, uh, the Bears have lost 12 straight. There's never been a coach that has done this, blah, blah, blah. Ten of those were planned. <laughs> Ten of those. Your GM literally said, Who, who's that guy? He's got a little talent. Get him out of town. I don't want to see that. I don't, we don't want that here, right? Like 10 of those losses were planned. But these two, when you do that in one season, you have to bounce back in a major way. And I'm looking at Matt Eberflus, looking at the principles that he believes in, looking at the things that he's instilling in his team. And I'm saying, I'm not seeing any of that on the field. And heck, I'm not even seeing it from your coaches with play calling. I'm <clears throat> not seeing it from <clears throat> you guys being from a prepared standard on the field that Packers game was completely unprepared I think they <laughs> I think they were better in the Bucks game because the Packers game plan fit the Bucks game plan so maybe they were two weeks prepared they just weren't prepared for that one maybe they were preparing two weeks early you know what I mean like I don't know I just I out of all the things I questioned most about Ryan Pace's time here the biggest question was always when are you gonna make the decision to fire this guy because he's hurting what your young quarterback that you took second overall is doing. I'm not calling for guys jobs here, but what I am saying is how long are we going to let incompetency happen before we start to look at the leaders in this building and say, Hey, are you doing your job well enough? That's a little deep for me. That's a little deep for me. You know, um, I am it's we're going on week three. And I just want to see some good football. I want yeah. I want to see the Bears come out and play some good hard football. I don't want to get into the intricacies of you know the the mind of the thought of the staff of the players of the you know <laughs> of the of the minds that create my bad my bad strings. I got like, a little I, deep you know, on that one. My bad. Absolutely. Listen, <laughs> at the end of the day, right, right, you know I'm I'm a meat and potatoes guy, man. You know what I mean. And let's just get down and play some good football. Let's yeah. play some good football. Give us something to root for. Give us a chance. Come out here and make a statement against the, the Kansas City Chiefs. You know, all is not lost. We can get this thing right. 
Okay, let's get it. Let's get it right. Let's play football the way that we know how. Let's be aggressive defensively. And when I say be aggressive, doesn't mean you have to blitz, but it does mean on that defensive backfield that we need to play aggressively to yeah. give our pass rush a few uh, milliseconds, you know, or or half a half a second or whatever to get to the quarterback. You know, yeah. let's ruffle some feathers. Let's make them. Let's get some a uh, lot more pro, uh, quarterback QB pressures and and linebackers. We need to fit right. We need to have our keys. We our eyes need to be correct, and we need to get downhill and make some doggone plays. What's the biggest change that you need to see as we play Pat Mahomes and the Kansas City Chiefs? The biggest. Change, I just said it right there. Yeah, you that's know, the, that's your biggest listen, one. It, it, listen, uh, the the hits principle. Defensive side, offensive side. <laughs> it's, it's, all, it, it's all in the principle. Yeah. Now, if everybody plays up to the, the the standard of their hits principle, we'll be fine. We'll be fine. You know, at the end of the day, we'll we'll, we'll be okay. You know, Justin, use your legs. Hey, Justin, run. Use your legs. <laughs> I, I love it. I love it, though. I'm not going to lie to you. It cracks me up because I get to see uh, uh, how people are where they're just like, what happened to the Justin Fields we had last season? You broke him. You guys broke him. He was you good. Broke you him. broke him. <laughs> like, uh, you know, last season wasn't exactly great. I don't know if they broke him just yet. But don't I do th think that there's something, mm. some of those routes, there's something in between here that he's got to get sorted out because it's like you just got to pull the trigger. Hey, listen, us – us, uh, our uh, media folks, man, we gotta we gotta stop trying to complicate this sport. It's not, you know, it, you know, learning it's, it's it can a case, be it's a simple learning, game. Learning it, learning it can can you know when you're actually on that field and you're like, oh man, I want to be like Justin Jefferson. I want to do this right yeah, here. Yeah, yeah. And then you get out on that field and the coach teaches you what you're supposed to do. Then you get out, you start doing it, and then the kid that's across from you grabs you by the face mask and throws you on the ground. <laughs> you know, you're like, this isn't football. You know, what is going on? Like, it's, listen, there's a lot that goes into it, but more so it's an aggressive, it's a violent sport. At the same time, you know, uh, um, it's, it, 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 it takes a lot out of you, but it's not complicated. All right. It's not, it's not that complicated. So listen, if, 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 if what's hurting us is, is Justin Fields not running. Hey, Justin, Hey, run some more. Use your legs. <laughs> And there it is. Hey, hey, you heard it here first, ladies and gentlemen. It's not that deep. Come on. <laughs> and the words of Lance Briggs, Come on. it's not that deep, bro. Come on. <laughs> Just play hey, some man. doggone. Play football the way you can play. If there's a hits principle, play up to the standard of the doggone hits principle. I think, I think that's the wild part, right? Like, you can't sit. This is the season where you can't sit here and say there's no talent on the team. Yannick Ngakwe is a talented player. Tremaine Evans is talented. TJ Edwards is talented. Eddie Jackson, unfortunately, dealing with injury, but he's talented, right? There's talent on that side. DJ Moore's talented. Justin Fields is talented. Like, you can look on the other side. You can look on both sides and be like, no, I see it. I've seen talent from all of these players. Why don't y'all do the talent thing together? Like, that's 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 the goal here. That's the, I got right. I to I gotta bring my hands on the screen because that looked weird with just I the thumbs you. here. <laughs> just gonna <laughs> y'all play together. <laughs> I look, hey, we're gonna get up out of here, man. Appreciate y'all for tuning in and showing love to another episode of the Chicago Bears podcast. It got weird. Y'all stay safe out there, Chicago. We'll be back here tomorrow with Courtney Cronin breaking down even more of what we saw from the Chicago Bears team versus the Bucks. Peace. <laughs>